ClearPoint helps organizations translate strategy into action by managing review meetings, automating balanced scorecards, and tracking key projects and initiatives. By coordinating all the little tasks you need to keep track of, ClearPoint makes it easy to manage strategy. Let's go into ClearPoint and show you some of the features. Welcome inside ClearPoint. This is a view of just a typical scorecard. We have objectives on the side. We have measures down the middle. We have some initiatives or projects here on the right side. So this is just an example scorecard of a school system. And as you can see, we pull this menu out. We get plenty more options to customize. If we want to drop the list, we can see there's different schools underneath. You know, this could be a middle, an elementary, and a high school. And then down on the bottom, we have some administrator options. So these can be hidden based on user access. But if we want to talk about how the scorecard looks over time, so this was third quarter of 2010. We want to go out into the future, say third quarter of 2011, which has not been filled in yet. You can see all this information is blank, but the template's still here. Let's go back to the third quarter and talk about how ClearPoint works. So we'll close this side menu make a little more space. So from the scorecard view we have you know, just a scorecard overview. If we want to go to a map view we can see these same icons for each of the objectives or measures on a map. We can see that some objectives are not going so well. Say we have a red arrow here. We can click on that. It takes us into a detail page that explains more about this objective. We see who the owner is, what the objective is all about. We have some charts of the underlying data. We have analysis and recommendations that applies to just this time period. So for the third quarter of 2010, our analysis is here, our recommendations here. These are actually initiatives or projects that are going to support this objective. You can click on the objective. It actually takes us to that detail page. You can see the start date, percent complete, what the budget is, any kind of action items that are tied to it, milestones. We have some Gantt chart too. So if we go back to the objective, there's incredible amount of accountability. There's also up-to-date data on how this objective is going. The same way, we can go to a measure, and we have a dashboard of all of our measures here. If we want to look at a, a measure detail page, we can do the same thing. We click here. Once the measure page loads, as you can see, we have it tied back to an objective here. We have a data gatherer, or owner, however you want to call this person that's accountable for the measure. We have a chart with data in it. We also have a data grid down here that records the actual series target information. And these columns can be calculated very similar to Microsoft Excel. We can also evaluate the status of the series based on the different numbers over here. Uh, we have a link to the child measures, child measures meaning say we have a district scorecard here and then we have an elementary or a high school these schools have measures that directly link to the district scorecard so as you can see this is how they link we click here it's going to take us to the child measure let's go back to the district measure we'll show you how to start editing some of this data we've tried to make clear point as simple and easy to use as possible let's open this sidebar we'll enable edit mode and now you can see there's icons that we can use to change this layout and this format. So down here we actually have an Excel import button. So if we have data in Excel and we want to import a lot of data quickly, we can copy it. We can paste it. And then we can paste it straight into this column. Let's cancel there and show you some of the other features. If we wanted to add an attachment, we have an attachment field here, and just say add attachment. You can name it, you can upload the file, whatever you want to upload. You can include it in the briefing book, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So let's close that. You know you can add attachments. If we click the layout button here, we can actually change the way this page loads. We can put the chart data here, and you see the chart data gets a half a page width here. We save it. Now it's a full page width. So the layouts are extremely easy to change. We have more fields on the side. We can also make custom fields very simply. And once the layout's set, we can come up here. We can take this page and quickly turn it into a PDF. Let's hit download and we hit open. And you can see this page shows in PDF. You can save this, you can email it however you want. 
You can also email this page directly from ClearPoint to, to anyone you need. You just type in their email here and it'll be gone. You can favorite this page. So if this is your measure that you're in charge of, you can favorite it and it'll show up over here. So this is my favorites. You can unfavorite it really quickly. You can refresh the page if you need. You can update it. You can edit it. You can actually delete the measure right here. If you click this, this is going to have context based help. So if you want help about a measure detail page, you click help. The help file looks like this. It takes you to a measure detail view. And we've got tons of help here to get you started. You can see this is actually about adding to my favorites, to emailing, printing. You can search over here too if you need more help. So let's close this. Now that we have our data in, we have our analysis and recommendations at the objective level, the next step is to go back and actually make a report out of all of our information. So to make a report, we're going to make something called a briefing book. A briefing book has a nice cover on it, and then it has these different slides, be it the detail pages, the summary screens, your strategy map, your dashboard, even a Gantt chart. So we're going to do this by clicking on Create Briefing Book. And this briefing book is going to be specific to this time period, but we can use a template through the time periods. So say we click Board Briefing Book, say yes. So we have a cover page already in. As you can see the different elements have already been selected. And if we want to include the action items, we can do that. So we're going to click Generate. The strategy map is going to refresh. The whole system is going to refresh. And then when this briefing book is complete, we're going to get a little message down here. It says briefing book complete. So with this briefing book generation complete message, we know our briefing book is ready. We go into the document library. In the document library, this is an archive of all the reports we've made in the past. If we want to see our report, we click here. It's going to open in a new tab. It's going to be just a second. Now it's loaded. As you can see, we have a pretty cover page. You could have a second page with any kind of executive report. Um, but we click through. We're actually going to get into the slides from the PowerPoint. And these are live linked. So if we go through and we actually click here, and this is in a PDF document, we click. It's going to take us to that detail page. We click here. It takes us back to the scorecard view. So this is a great way to have a PDF version of your briefing book to send out to the community. We can close. Come back into ClearPoint. Let's close here. So we've shown you the basic idea that you set up your template, you fill in the information for a time period, then you go to the next reporting cycle, say it's fourth quarter of 2010. You go back in, you're going to have to fill in the new analysis, the new data, the new recommendations, and update the system. But ClearPoint is going to have a history of what you did in the last quarter last month whenever your reporting cycle is and that's how ClearPoint generally works we've got a few things that administrators need to know so an administrator can come in and they can actually change profiles so if you want to change your password you can do that we're working on language support so right now we have a Spanish and an Arabic version more languages will come most people in the US don't need this but some international organizations do so we have that feature the options tab is for power users these are for your administrators of the organization. Click on options. You can see this is a scorecard tab, so if we need to delete, edit, or add scorecards, we can do that here. On the users tab, we can see our users, we can see our user groups. If we need to make a report of who has access to the different parts of ClearPoint, we can do that quickly with this button. We can add a user, or if we need to edit a user, we can do that too. So let's click edit user. We can change passwords, uh, we can change languages, change email address, name, you know, somebody misspelled the name, we can fix it here. And then by scorecard means we can select the scorecard access. So for this scorecard, we can make them a scorecard admin. For this one, they might have no access. We want to make the person an editor for this scorecard. Anyway, access is really easy to do. Periods, this is going to be your reporting cycles. So for this system, they report quarterly and then they also report semi annual and annually. 
for another user they might have months here and then for periodicity options they could have quarterly and annual just make sure your reports line up and then if we go into setup these are very advanced options we can set a currency if we need to we can change confidentiality notice we can change the export size uh, we can make custom numbers we can make custom status icons so if you don't like the green arrow we can put whatever we need there we can change you know if you don't use the word measures you were use the word KPI for key performance indicator we could put KPI instead of measure custom fields we can add a custom field to any layout so if we need a URL link if we need an image field if we need another text field anything we need here we can make custom fields and then data is a very powerful area it usually needs some help from ascendant to get set up but you can pull in data from Excel you can also pull in data from other databases using SQL queries so these are two capabilities that make ClearPoint really powerful. We'll show you some other customizations we can do. We hit cancel. We we'll go back into the system. And we open up measure. And actually change the charts really simply. We can pick the chart type here. And we have quite a few charts in. We can also make custom charts if you need a special type of chart. You can change the reporting cycle for the chart. Got plenty of options. Pick which series show in the chart. You can have a legend, you can have titles. Try to make ClearPoint really easy to use. So charts are easy to fix however we need. Same way if we go to initiatives. And it loads, we can go to the Gantt chart. And for the Gantt chart dates, we go back in time to a period that has data. You can take these dates, these percentage completes, you can actually export them to Outlook so it matches your calendar. And then if we go to any other summary screen, say an objective screen, we can hit this Excel button and this summary screen will export to Excel. And it's just another way to get your data out of ClearPoint and make it easy to use. So you can see this is your data in Excel. So if we go back, we've put a ton of work into ClearPoint. We think it's great software for meeting management, scorecarding and dashboarding, project management, and most importantly, making sure your team knows what your strategy is, how well you're doing, and that you're able to respond. We would like to thank you for watching this demonstration. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at Ascendant Strategy Management Group. We'll respond via email, or we can set up a more thorough demo. Again, we appreciate it. Best of luck.